Welcome to News Cafe. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. I'm at Museo Orlina in Tagaytay, which showcases the work of world-famous artist known for his modern glass art, Ramon Orlina, also known as the father of Philippine glass sculpture. Before him, glass was appreciated mostly for its utilitarian function, as drinking vessels, window glass panes, or automotive windshields. In the 70s, Orlina, the visionary, transformed the medium by elevating it to a highly prized art form. At a time when glass art was in its very early stages in Europe and North America, this Batangas-grown artist pioneered the highly skilled craft in the Philippines. His work captivated the art scene here and around the world and continues to be coveted by art collectors. Tonight we profile self-taught artist Ramon Orlina who has been transforming glass into art for almost four decades. So Ramon, tell us, how did this fascination with glass start? Oh, I, uh, I really don't know, you know, <laughs> because actually I'm an architect by profession. And if you think of uh, modern architecture, it is steel and glass. Yes. And during the time when I was doing architecture, I always incorporated glass, especially mirrors, into the room. So it mm -hmm. makes the space a little bit bigger yes. than the ordinary. So I don't know, maybe then I like glass because as a medium, because nobody was using it before. But in your childhood, you lived in Taal, Batangas, and there was glass in your home, which was uh, made by your great-grandfather. Yes, yes. Uh, my great-grandfather's house was uh, the, the uh, windows, instead of kapis, mm. were made of glass, which yes. he did. Yes. Actually, I didn't even meet my great -grand my, my grandmother, so I didn't mm -hmm. even meet my great-grandfather, but, you know, uh, maybe my, grandpa my uncle was saying that, you know, maybe you were influenced by... By, by the lahi of your da, or great Because it's in your genes. No? Maybe, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, well, I'm happy that, you know, I was able to do something about glass as mm -hmm. a medium for... Because you were the first, you really pioneered this. At a time when no one was doing it, it was only in Europe and North America. Yes, glass yes, was... yes. And I'm so happy because, you know, so, during the time that I first started it, I was uh, being offered by Republic Glass a scholarship. Mm -hmm to wherever I want for two to three years. Yes. And after one week of thinking about it, I went back to the president of the Republic and told him, thank you for your offer, but I'm not accepting it. Mm -hmm. So she said, what do you want? So I told him that, can you let me into your factory? Because if I can experiment or maybe know about glass, because in architecture, you cannot build something if you don't know the material. So I have to know the material that I don't know. Yeah. Because when I painted on glass, I did plate glass. I buy it, mm. 30 by 40. I know what is seed glass, plate glass, wire glass, tempered glass, but I don't know how to make glass. Yeah. So when they let me into your factory and they introduced me to all the executive who studied glass, so the technology of glass is there. Yes. But I must do it on on glass. So let's go back a little and talk about your time as an architect Then you made the switch to art. What was it that made you decide to get into art? Was it during martial law? What happened? Oh, uh, I have a good practice during the time you know, when I uh, resigned from Carlos Arguelles. I worked there for four years, which is a big architectural firm. So I learned my architecture there. <clears throat> but uh, what happened was, you know, I was supposed to, actually, would you believe I was supposed to build a 15-story building already in wow, 1972. Yeah. Mm. Then suddenly, Marcia looked at me. And the one who is uh, commissioning me to do this is a government person. Okay. So, I had my connection there. So, during that time, I have four draftsmen. I had three, I had two. Then, I had one. I said, I'm going to paint it. I'm going to paint it. I'm going to paint it. Even during that time, I was with Carlos Arguelles. There were three of us architects who talk about art, no? And one is the first cousin of Oni Bulmedo. We go to the house of Oni Bulmedo. So, na influence ako ng art. And itong friend ko, who's also an architect, after uh, two years, Shaki Arguelles resigned and became an artist. Sabi ko, si Raulo mo, di ba? <laughs> Sabi ko, what can you, what will happen to you, di ba? Starving not, artist kasi yeah, ano at the time. Not knowing I will become one. Yes, <laughs> but, right. you know. Well, you always liked to draw when you were young because you saw your uncle, Jim Fernandez, who created Zuma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, where it started, your love for art. Yeah, you know? yeah, and drawing, which yes. is important in the art. You said it was good you were single at the time because if you were married, it would have been hard to get into art. Yes, you know. 
one thing good about my professor during the time I had my design, my first day of design in UST, our professor was Desiderio Santos, told us that, you know, we are four sections, you know, on the fourth year, there will be only one section that will graduate. So she said also that, you know, for those who will graduate, my advice to you, and you keep it in your mind, you know, is don't get married early. <laughs> so it just, he didn't explain why, he just said that, you know. And yeah, we, we talk about design because he is a design professor, no? And after a while, about maybe around 15 minutes at the day, he said, hey, I also can tell you another uh, advice, you know, is go to all the parties that you can go to. <laughs> Network? Then, yeah. Mm. That's it. He didn't yeah. say anything. What? Wala, yes. wala. Tapos na. Oh. Then only when I was working with Carlos Arguelles that I realized what he meant. Mm. Because during that time I was with, with Carlos Arguelles, we were around 40 architects, 40 or more. There were eight of them who are still there. And they became old already, working for Arguelles, you know. So I was thinking, I don't want to be here, you know, all my <laughs> life, you know. Oh, they're good, you know, they are the one yeah. designing. But always it will be Carlos Arguelles and Associates. Yes. They're part of the Associates, but they didn't even name them, you know. So, right. wala. But sabi kong ganyan, oh, I won't be here. And, you know, time mm. writes in Desi Santos. Because these people, why they are here is because they are married. Yes. They have children going to school. May bahay binabayaran. May coaching binahulugan. They cannot leave. It's hard to leave your commitments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hard, to, hard to have no money. You had your first solo exhibit in 1976, Reflections. No, 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 75. 75, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, mm. Reflections, Paintings on Glass. And you sold, what is it, you had 25 paintings? You sold 80% right away. Yeah, 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 yeah. During the opening, I think it was 60. Uh, eventually, before it ends, you know, 80. But eventually, yeah. I sold it, you know, except one. Yes. You know, I always reserve something for myself. Uh -huh. So. And this is where you're discovered by... Yeah, RGC. then Republic Glass get to learn about what I'm doing to uh, some press releases and they approach me if I can give a talk. After the talk and I bring three paintings, uh, Mr. Lim of uh, Republic Glass, the president, was in, you know, amazed on what I've been doing. And they say, okay, Mr. Lina, we have talked and uh, we decided to give you a, a scholarship for two to two years, wherever you want to go. Mm. And the vice president said, yeah, if you run out of money, all you have to do is ring us up and we'll send you the money. Wow. Well, it's too good to be true, no? I was thinking, wow, this is too good to... I yeah. can't believe it, you know, huh? What did they see in me, no? But oh. we did paintings, that, you know. But, but I know that they are into sculpting because, you mm. know, what can you do with plate glass, no? So I was thinking, yeah. But after one week, I came back and I told Mr. Lim, Mr. Lim, thank you very much for your offer, but I'm not accepting it. Okay. The reason maybe is I don't want to be beholden. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, alone. may utang na loob ka. And there will nothing always be free. strings attached. Yeah, there's nothing free in this world, di ba? So it's either magpa utang bayad ako utang na loob, if they don't ask for it, I will be the one who will offer it. Something ganun tayo Filipino. Eh. So, but without any commitment ako sa akin, or sabi ko, wala akong utang na loob, uh -oh. I can do whatever I want, di ba? Yeah. So what she said, they told me, what do you want? Sabi ko, I want to know about class. And can you just let me into a factory? And he said, yeah, I can let you in. I will introduce you to everybody. And you can ask anything you want about glass. Because yeah. I told them that, you know, I can only do something if I know what is the material. Mm. As an architect, I know that, you know, you have to have to know the material, the, the hard block, the concrete, to know to build the house. But to build something about anything, you have to know what is the material. Mm -hmm. And I get to know about it through Republic Glass. Mm, how so you would learn the technical part. Yeah, that, so maybe. as if I went there to study, studying and my professors were people who studied abroad no from Belgium from ano so i got good experience instead of just reading books you know i was yes. there already it's a derecho na di ba? Oh. so what's what good about that is uh, i just write down what i need and they buy it for me so that is my experimentation everything is okay yeah. then i get to find these chunks of glass which is left on the bottom of the furnace the furnace is around 150 square meters, so malaki, no? Tapos na sa furnace, nakita ko, yung chunks of glass is around 6 inches thickness then too. When I saw it, and it was ganun kalaki, I said, this is it, you know? If I will be able to cut this, hmm. then I can do something. Mm -hmm. But you know, they're using the refractory. The refractory yung panggawa ng... Kasi they, they have, every 8 years, they have a cold repair. Tatanggalin nila yung, yung pinaka... 
forno mm. na mm -mm. yung furnace. Yes. Tatanggalin niya, papalta ng bagong furnace because nalalaglag na yung glass. If uh -oh. it's dirty na, it will not turn out to be a good kind of quality of glass. Right. So yun, every eight years they have changed it. Yung pag-change na yan, iniiwan nila, ganito ka natin, kalalim, because they drain it. Okay. And put it on another furnace because they have four furnaces operating. Yun, sabi ko sa kanya, okay, I was able to cut it. Then I went back to Mr. Lim's office and said, sabi ko, dinala ko yung, ano, yung glass. Sabi niya, ano gagawin mo dyan? <laughs> sabi ko, I will cut it like this, like that, and like that. Yeah, so ako, yeah, 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 sabi ko. Yeah. Can I request that the glass blocks or the collets will be higher, around three feet. Okay. And you anneal it. Hmm. Uh, annealing is the slow cooling of the glass. Anneal. Okay. To anneal is to make it stronger. Okay. Let's say even in metal, like swords or everything, you have to anneal it so pwedeng hindi basta mababali kung nag ka or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Mat matigas yung steel. So that's what they did. Because they have four furnaces, to wiggle yung isa, it was okay because we were a third world country. Yes. The supply and demand is kaya ng tatlo. Uh -oh. So pwede ako tumigil dito ng five months, which is good for me. Yeah. Because I have to anneal it for two months, then get it out of the furnace for two months. So right. four months na yun, ano? So then that's the time I can work on the glass. Okay. And that's what I did study. I study by my own cut, grind, mm -hmm. smooth, and polish, which I learned by myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the method. All right, well, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll hear all about Ramon Orlina's artistic method and work. We'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to look at your work for 400 years in UST, the Cuatro Mundial. Tell us about how this came about. So here, this is the, how long, this is the... Uh, this is the model. Yeah. Yes. And actually, I was... Uh, 2011. No? Yeah, maybe uh, five years before that, uh, the board of uh, UST asked me for design for the 400th anniversary celebration of UST. Yeah. So I conceptualized four people representing the 400 years. One is a female student, a male student, a teacher, and a priest. So she, so you can see when she... And your there. models are USD students. You're yes. a co-alumni. Yeah. So name some of them. So you have Piola Pascual. Piola Pascual is from USD. Uh, Charlene Gonzalez, no? And the, the priest is actually the, the from USD. But the student, you know, is my daughter. So what made you think of coming up with this? Because for a conservative institution like USD, this yes. is quite daring with the news. Yeah, yeah. But you know, when I think of, let's say, art, you know, we don't think about being nude or naked because this one projects art. And you know, I think during the time of uh, even the 1500s, you know, they were using it by Michelangelo, you know. But you know, I made it in the point that, let's say, carrying a, a globe, you know, because USD is a global Institution and the arms are outstretched, so outstretched, supposedly yeah. they they describe they mm. represent the gesture yeah. here in the description. It says they represent four centuries of erudition, spirituality, and tradition. Yes, and of course, I will have the glass, which is actually my trademark. Yes. And you know, yeah. one thing good about the glass is I made it all here. No, these are all Republic glass, glass which is locally made. Mm -hmm. But the bronze, I did the casting in Thailand. Again, I love what this symbolizes because here. You really had the idea to symbolize the university as a beacon for educators and students who try to find their way to wisdom. Welcome back to the show. We are talking to Ramon Orlina. Okay, let's go through some of your favorite works. Let's talk about this one first. Tell us about this piece. Oh, this is one of my new editions, which is uh, uh, made of lead crystal. And it has only cutting, polish, and frosted pennies. Mm -hmm. And if you go around, you'll see a lot of angles. And that's one thing nice about glass, is you can 
go inside. Okay. It looks like there are chambers inside, but actually it's just spaces made by the... the, the it's like a prism world. in the reflection of the light. Yes, isn't yes. It? Yeah, very well done. So yeah, it's well lighted from the bottom. Yes. And the next but one? But this looks better if it's, let's say, if there's a window in here, light can go in and let's say if, if it hits the light or let's say the, the sun, it will produce us... I don't know, rainbow, different yeah. colors. Prisms. Yeah. Yes. On the flooring. So this is what fascinated you also about the glass, that yeah. it changes because of the play of light. Yeah, yeah, so, right. yeah. And one movement here is already different from this angle. That's one thing about glass. So many different because, interpretations. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is beautiful. With abstract forms like this, you can make your own interpretation. Yes. I don't even, even name it a name, but you know, you can make your own name and make your own interpretation. Yes. Was this inspired by something? Because usually you're inspired by nature, cloud formations, your family. What was this inspired by? Oh, this is maybe, maybe architectural. Mm, yeah. Which is maybe, as you can see, angles and you know, yes. angles and lines. Yes. And frosted and palace penis. Right. Well, this compares. So this glass, tell us about this one. This is a bronze. Yeah, this one is. What is this no, finish? This one is made of, of a different kind of ah, glass. It's a green. Sorry. It's a green, but yeah. it's a different. And this one can move. Wow, that's scary. It's <laughs> So the point is, what is this supposed to represent? I mean, I know it's abstracted. What were you thinking of when you made this? No, I was just thinking of maybe because before I made a form like this, which is a, like a mother and child. But when I was looking at the form, I said, it's good to make a form, even though it's not like a mother and child. Because mother and child are like do that. But this one is just an abstract form. Yeah. So until it stops by itself, no? Yes. Then it goes to the green. And this one is a like, also a little bit greenish, but when it's lighted from the bottom, it's turning into another color, which is bluish green. It reminds me of kryptonite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is this supposed to be? I mean, here this also looks very architectural. Yeah. And these are, let's say, mountains, you know. Mm. I have a mountain series, no? Yeah. So this one is a form, forms like mountains, you know. Yes. So I have a uh, Bakiling mountain or whatever inspired me or whatever I like. Well, tell us about some of your influences, some of the favorite artists who have really inspired you. You, you like Bauhaus. Yeah, yeah. Bauhaus, yeah. Well, Bauhaus, well, Bauhaus movement is very geometric. Yes. No? Then, well, I like, for the architect, I like Le Corbusier. Mm. No, I like, uh, let's say, the, the sculptors, I like Moore. No? Mm -hmm. I like and the Filipinos, I like Abueba, mm -hmm. no? the father of Philippine modern sculpture. No? Good friends I like, of yours. I like very also. good friends. Of course, of mine. Ben Cabrera. Ben Cab. Yeah. yeah. There are the, the people who influence you, or maybe not really influence you, but you know, uh, lead you to something. Yes. Because I don't really want to copy anybody. Yes. So it to be different and should be original. Yeah. So that is maybe the form or the way artist works on. You know, you make your own form and make your own identity. Yes. And I think that is what I'm focused in. You know. Mm -hmm to have my own kind of identity, own kind of style and technique. And definitely for you, nobody else was doing glass sculpture at your time when you started. So really, in the yeah. Philippines, this was, you pioneered it. Yes, and maybe I can say that up to now, nobody can do what I'm doing. Yeah. So maybe I have no problem about, let's say, being copied, you know. Let's say, right now, Ben Cup have a problem because a lot of Ben Cup have imitation. imitation or mm -hmm. fakes, you know. Forgeries. Wala pang fake early na. Cannot, you know, because maybe the, the problem is not really the good thing is I'm the one who knows about the technique. Yes. So I have not taught it to anybody, only my assistant. I have 16 assistants, you know. So because it goes into cutting, grinding, smoothing, polishing. Mm -hmm. So of this, I'm only on the first part, which mm -hmm. is the cutting. Yes. The grinding, the smoothing, polishing, I give it to my assistant. Then on the next week, I'll be doing another thing. And the next week, I'll be doing On this one, it goes this way. Yeah. On the third week, it goes back to me. So it's the other side already because by that time, I can see already the other side. Mm -hmm. Because it's ready. Because after my cutting, it's as rough as this one. I cannot see what is on the other side. Yeah. But on the third week, I can see. Then I can add some things. Okay. Some design. So how long would something like this take when you make this small one? Oh, this small one will take maybe around two weeks. Eh? Okay. But okay. if it's a big one, it will become one month to one month and a half. Wow. Because wow. it becomes uh, harder to do and you can, you know, but also this kind of form is harder to do. Because this one, 
has no line, see? Ah, so it's all these curved. are curving. Peaceful and the waves. only way I can make this polish is by grinding it manually. Mm -hmm. This one I can be grinding it with my grinder. Yeah. Mero kang grinder, silicone, derecho. But this one has to be grinded manually. Yeah. Yeah, ito, instead of let's say one week, ito definitely, pag grinder ito, is almost two weeks. Uh -oh. So yun ang matagal. So lahat na medyo may curb, mas matagal gawin. Uh -oh. And the uh, straight ones. So. Yeah. And some of your pieces, this one in the back, when your wife was breastfeeding, there was a time you were into breasts. So yeah, this yeah, is what yeah. inspired a, this work over here. I have here. what they call the Ning Ning series. Ning Ning series, and this yeah, is it. The yeah, the Ning Ning series, during that time, 1989, mm -hmm. my daughter, Ning Ning, uh -huh. actually a lot of people thought Ning Ning was my wife. Ah, okay. No, Ning Ning <laughs> is my, my daughter. Your daughter, okay. Yeah, she was breastfeeding for two years. Okay. And maybe the constant exposure of the breastfeeding you know, if you're in a restaurant, you just put <laughs> So when I, when I did my, my, my sculpture, because when I do my sculpture, it's direct carving. Yes. Direct. I don't do any sketches. I sketch. Ah, I have a, okay. yeah. Then yeah. look at the glass. Then so do you the see cutting. the form. Yeah. So the form. Mm. So mm. then after that, constant exposure with the breastfeeding, suddenly I was putting, making breasts, you know. Yeah. So maybe then I call it Ning Ning because inspired by Ning Ning's breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, so then, uh, up to now, a lot of people want the Ning Ning series. Uh -huh. you know? This was this is sold already. Yes. Because the guy who said, you know, I want this particular breast, but you know, since I very hard to to cure, and this one I will buy it already because you know. <laughs> so they, a lot of people still like the the, the Ning Ning series. Yes. Up to now, but uh, yeah. do you ever think of bringing them back? Because you've stopped. Do you ever think of going back to old yeah, styles? Yeah, sometimes I still do because after that I did also the pintados. Mm. The pintados, a Ning Ning series which has. Paints here, oh, diba, the, the Visayan, during oh. the time the Spaniards came, we have the pintados. And I do the etching on the other side. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the, the, the design goes here. Mm -hmm. But when you touch it, you cannot feel anything because the design is on the back. Yes. That's one thing good about the glass. Because of it's trans transparent, you can see the other back. Or right. the back. Yes. Okay, let's talk about your controversial work, The Wings of Victory, which really catapulted you to the international map of visual artists. Tell us about that. I was commissioned in 1985, two works in Singapore. These are major works which are uh, public works. Eh? One is the Fertile Crescent and the Wings of Victory, mm. which is made of all metal. Yeah. The Fertile Crescent is glass and stainless steel. So that's uh, the two works that actually uh, made me, in a way, no, no famous. After no? 10 years. Yeah, say, after right? 10 after years, 10 because years you know, they the... noticed me that time, no? that I can do this. And when Miss Zangara was passed by an uh, orchard, I said, oh, this is a work by Filipino. I said, oh, oh this is a work by Ramon Orlina. And he said, she said, oh, see. <laughs> so, no, Pinoy, no, no, yeah, Pinoy no? right? mm -hmm. so, That's okay. But because during that time, nobody can really write about what I'm doing. The last nobody in our art circle or art critics can write about glass because nobody knows about what is glass. Yes. And only in 19, so many years ago, that you know, the Australian mm. who went to see my first book, the Ark 19, yeah. huh, saw it in the lobby of the Silai Hotel and he noticed that, you know, this is a big work. It's 180 by 320 meters, you no, know, by 60 centimeters protruding out. And it weighs around three tons. And this is the Arcanum. This is Arcanum 19. That's why he noticed that, you know, oh, during the time, in the 70s, there were very few large-scale yes. contemporary artworks done worldwide. Yeah. And it gives light to the notion that uh, American and Europe, Europe were the only ones yeah, who only could ones. do this, this guy is uh, quite ahead, you know. Yeah. It's only now that time or during that time that I get to learn uh, Una Palabo because I oh. never seen the other works also. Oh. <laughs> so, but he's the one who's more informed. He's well informed because he's a lecturer. He yeah. goes abroad. He goes. He's Australian. So, then he get to know about you know, medyo, medyo, may advance, may advancement Palabo dito sa Pilipinas, and I was able to develop it. Oh, <laughs> may advancement Palabo ginawa, and I was able to develop it on my own effort. You know, yeah. nobody was able to teach me or guide me. It was on trial and error, I was able to produce yeah. an artwork mm -hmm. in one year. Yeah. Well, we'll talk more about your work. We'll just take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about the multi-awarded sculptor Mon Erlina's other experiences and awards.
and this, here the mudras cross. Yeah, the mud, that's the mudras cross which I put in uh, in uh, Greenbelt Chapel. During that time, Greenbelt was very bare of uh, other establishment, yes. only the church, you know. So during the time I put it, because if you put a cross, no, uh, if it's it a will, plain cross, a plain cross, it will look like a memorial park. No? So what yes. I did is I put this two mudra the hands. mudras. Yeah, hand mudras is mudras is gesture, no. Yes. So the gesture is like two hands, no, clasping a cross. The cross. So Beautiful. In, so yeah. it means that into the hands I commit my spirit, like that, you know? So those see this as entrance, no? and that's, you know, so if the people come in, they say, come in. Those who are, are not for me, go out. <laughs> that's so it. that's what the two, the two hands are the representing, two hands representing it. But actually, uh, I did also the altar for that, no? Yes. And if you press a button here, the, the tabernacle will come out slowly. Wow. And you, on the In other side, it will go down. Very forward thinking for the time. Beautiful. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's the posted and the palace together. No? So you consider this one of your best commissioned works? Yes, no? and it's very important for me because this is where I got married. Oh. I was the first one who got married in this chapel because they don't allow marriage in a chapel wherein they have the Don Bosco church, which they say is the parochial hmm. or the parish priest. Welcome back to the show. We are getting into the mind of Ramon Orlina. Okay, Ramon, let's talk about your work and the exhibits abroad. When you won the Mr. F Prize of the prestigious Toyamura International Sculpture Biennale in mm -hmm. Hokkaido, Japan, mm -hmm. what was that like? Well, I, I've been exhibiting abroad in Japan, in other countries, no? but uh, it's a good thing when I entered this competition in Japan and in Madrid, uh, I won mm -hmm. the first prize which is Basketball Mimundo, and it's a two meters by 150 meters, stainless steel and glass. And I think the judges caught the eye of the, 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 the glass, which is around 60 centimeters, two feet, and covered by, not really covered, but surrounded by steel. Uh, stainless steel, which, which has the form of ah, the basketball okay. design. Mm -hmm. Then it reflected into the glass. So I think it, it caught the eye of the, the the, the yes. judges. In Japan, I was one of the winners of the Mr. F Prize of uh, the Toyomura Binyale. And it was a good uh, exposure for me because I'm one of the winners, though I didn't get the top prize, you know. It was the favorite of the town because they had the voting among all the residents and mine was chosen by the resident to be the number one. So during the exhibition, Mine was the most centered of all the... In the name five. of that work was Silvery Moon. Yes. Right? So this is... The, it was a beautiful setup. You said it was around a lake. Yes, all of the sculptures yes, yes. were around the lake. Yeah, yeah. So would you say this is one of your most memorable exhibitions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, actually I was also exposed to those, those uh, big sculptures around, around 80, around that lake. Yes. And these are not small ones. The, the smallest is maybe around 10 to 12 feet. Yeah. So this exposure of these people from that town can lead them to maybe do a right choosing or choosing which one that they like. Yes. And they, luckily, they chose mine. <laughs> and in 2007, you won the Outstanding Filipino Award of the TOEFL, and you became the father of Philippine glass sculpture. Now, this was something that recognized you for your immense uh, contributions to public welfare and national development. How does that make you feel when you hear this almost towards becoming a national artist. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's also very political. What are your thoughts about these awards and, and recognitions? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the recognition, especially, you know, who, who, who doesn't like recognition, you know, but uh, uh, it's a good thing that during the time I was winning, I was winning abroad, you know, because sometimes if we win here, there is some sort of a political thing, and that's what the problem with this we have here in the Philippines, you know. I have nothing against it about, but, you know, I cannot, I'm not, I cannot handle everything. Mm. But uh, that's why, in a, in a way, it led into my doing my museum. Because actually, with making my museum, I was able to show my progress from the 76 up to 2015, 2014. Yes, you were thinking about it for about five years till it finally opened last year, yes, April yes. 2014. Actually, even more. But I was planning to put it in our hometown 
the Albatangas. Mm -hmm. But I decided to do it here because the climate is very good and it's a destination really for tourists. Yes. So I don't have any problem on having visitors to come. Yes. Especially in weekends, I well, sometimes we cannot handle it. You know? There was a time that there were 130 students who, who come in and so we have to make it in batches. So, well, but I'm happy great. to exposing it. Yes, and people have something else to do here besides eating. Yes, it is a beautiful what, place. How did you think of the plan for this place? Because you have different floors and the areas are named after your children. So tell us about the way this place, the space has been done. Mm, yeah, I, if you notice, the second floor and the third floor is my museum. These are my old works from 1977 no? and up to now to the present. And I named them after my children, you know, children, which is some sort of an inspiration for me. And maybe by next year, I'll open up the next space on the other side, which will make the space for the museum yes. bigger. Because I find it a little bit too near each other because uh, I have to post it because there are years wherein it has to be, be shown because mm. it, it shows of what I've been doing on those let's say, era of five years. So mm -hmm. I have to put, expose this one by one. Right. How did you choose the other artists? Because apart from your work, you feature other artists. What makes you decide on who will be showcased here in Museo Orlina? Well, that is on the, the gallery. The gallery is where I chose the artists to exhibit, not on the museum, mm -hmm. because in the museum, is exclusively for my works. And other works or other paintings by Jerry Navarro, who was a national artist, Betsy Westendorf, you know. Uh, these are all my own collection. I have a Hoya, I have Balquas. On the water painting is by my friends. So at least you can also see other works here. But the pieces like in the sunken garden outside, they are for sale. So you exhibit some pieces there. Yeah, because it's part of the, the gallery. Yes. So there are pieces there by Ben Cav, by Luz, by Daniel de la Cruz, you know. Mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of uh, artists still want to exhibit, but I have to choose which one is, uh, fits well. Yes. A very interesting piece beside you, the Virgen. Mary, tell us about that piece. Very interesting because with the way you look at it, she smiles or she frowns. Tell us about the story behind this. Yeah, because I was thinking of, uh, I'm a Marian devotee. No? Virgen Maria. I even uh, had uh, uh, a play that was, um, that was made, it was shown in CCP. And this is about the Virgin Mary. That's I, as I told you, I'm a Marian devotee. Yes. And if you look, in this case now, it's on. It's looking on the left side and, and staring at me. Now I'm. It's a front, no. So it's 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 in front of me now, no. But if it turns a little bit more to the left, no, then he she will be facing the right side. See, but if I go here and I. Kneel down, the She's lips will change. Smiling. It's almost smiling. Yes. That one I didn't know. It just came out like that. <laughs> always a surprise. You know, like yeah. you said, with glass, yeah. there's always a different uh, yeah. interpretation yeah. depending on what angle you look at. Yes. Now tell us about some of your clients. You, you have many clients. You are collected by art collectors all over the world. You have been, your work has been bought by presidents, all kinds of presidents. Tell us about from Marcos to Aquino to Arroyo. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I talked to President Ra Fidel Ramos, no? because he has the most collections of my work. Because a lot of time during his time, there were a lot of businessmen who were doing or giving him gifts done by me. So he has a lot of my works. No? So I told him, hey, President Ramos, can we exhibit your works here together with the other president? Because Eric has my works, uh, even Cory Aquino has my work, up to Imelda Marcos has maybe one or two pieces of my work. Huh? So maybe I'll say that I'll be having an exhibition of what they call the, the President's Collection. <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> that's but a good exhibit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, imagine all the President. Because a lot of them was not seen in public. Mm. Because from a commission work, it goes directly to President Marcos, to, especially to Fidel Ramos. Mm. Who has so a lot biggest his, collector yeah. among the Presidents. Uh, yeah, because he was the most in, in how do you call it, more in business. And the business people are the ones giving him the, the present. So yes. they commissioned me to do something like this. He has the one, the colored blue. He has the one, the, the, the clear one. So he has a lot. Mm -hmm. And he lives maybe around six 
house away from here. So perhaps a future collection here at Museo Orlini. Yeah, of the all the president's, president's collections. collections. Yes, so. very interesting. All right, we'll take another quick break. When we return, we'll talk about Ramon Orlina's advocacies and the road ahead. We'll be right back. Several years ago, BMW asked you to design some of their miniature yeah. art cars. There were eight of us that was asked by BMW to design something because they will be exhibiting the real art cars of BMW in Germany. So there were eight, no, there were eight of us that was commissioned by BMW to do this. Mm -hmm. So I was commissioned to do this one. So, so just, how did you come up with that design? Of course, this yeah. represents the glass. Yeah, the and thing. also, uh, like a sporty design, no? And good thing is, the, the see, it has poles like this, so I can do it not like the Mondrian is very square, no? So I made it like this. And it was one of the favorite during the time that it was shown. And they had an auction. and. During the auction, it was mine who was only sold. You know? Really? <laughs> auction, yeah, yeah. So, Welcome back to the show. We are talking to Ramon Orlina. So you have said that one of your greatest extravagances has been cars, restoring, buying vintage cars. Yes, yes, yes. And this is why you call your atelier, the atelier, atelier also. Atelier, yes, yes. Tell us about the atelier, Orlina, and your love for cars. The atelier is my studio for my vintage cars, you know. I have cars from 1937, 1968, which is Fiat 500, a Volvo that you saw downstairs. And half of my cars are uh, vintage, so. Yes. And I like cars, you know. And so, you collect, you're a big collector. You have so many miniature cars. Like, tell yes, us about yes, some yes. of these. Yes, this, you know, my favorite car is the Beetle. The reason is because it was my first car. So, and I did in 2008, no? I cut it into half, no? And I extended it into a limousine. No, so you have a limousine, which is. Uh, a winner in a car show. During the exhibition, 25 couples said, you know, can we use it as a wedding car? Now I'm renting it. And actually, I have recovered my cost already because, let's say, not this December, the other December, the white one was rented 17 days in December. Wow. So it means I have, I have recovered my expenses on that. So I was able to ask my wife, hey, let's buy another one and made it into a black one, which is a little bit. But the people doesn't like black for the wedding, but some people does. So that is my, what they call yeah. this, my diversion. Yes. So maybe my more thinking that I'm downstairs working on the sculpture, but actually I'm the other side working on the, on the cars. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, you won for an auto show your Mondrian inspired yeah. um, car. Tell yes, us about that yes. one. And why you chose that design. I was looking for a for Porsche. Sure. Then uh, I saw down, down below the uh, uh, there's a, a Volvo. Uh, two door. So, so I was okay, I haven't found a Volvo two door of that 740 series, no, which I have, no. So I went to look at it, and really I like it because it's really squarish. So just right for a Mondrian design. Mm. So after that, I, I think of it as an art car with a Mondrian inspired color. So, so you see it there. Yes. And I'm quite happy and. The mileage of that is only around 73,000 kilometers, so mm. it's very, it's less, yes. it's not hindi less pan, no? Oh, so very in good condition. Very and very right condition. next to it is your Volkswagen, that Ben Cab painted. Yes, yes. You exchanged, yes. It, you exchanged artworks. Yeah, we exchanged artwork and you said, Ramon, you make something for me, uh, for my museum. Yeah, I said, well, okay. After I finish it, sort of Ben Cab, I'm delivering it to you already. My boss will deliver it in Baguio and I'll also send my canvas to you. Mm. He said, what canvas? <laughs> well, my canvas is a box back in Beetle. And he did it, and I think he's quite happy with it. He even displayed it at the SWATS. No? He sure. borrowed it for me. Yeah. And, you know. yeah. and next, uh, this year, he will be having a retrospective, and he's borrowing it for me to 
exhibit in one of the museums because yeah. it is part of his creation. Yes. So I did not tell him what to do when he said, this is one I read, you buy the red. So I told him, Ben, come, you do everything. You know? I'll just send an assistant there who will teach you how to paint it. You know, but everything he did it. And I think I gave you a, a CD on how it was done. And I'm quite Beautiful. happy with it. And it's now part of my museum. Yeah. Now. And I have another one on the way. I gave it to Elmer Borlongan. The one I'm doing now, which they think they film, will be done by Tiny Noida. Mm. And I have another one coming. These are all Volkswagen Beetle that I will do it myself. Yes, so another art collection soon to be yeah. in Museo yeah. Orlina. Huh? Yeah. So now you're very passionate about history. So in Taal, you've also been campaigning for preserving history, for example, because you, you're very, um, you support the Taal Basilica. And there was a controversial building next yes, to that, yes, yes, that you yes, contested. From the beginning, I want to preserve the heritage of my town. Because you cannot destroy which is something there already. And you know, I, I envy, let's say, Lawag. It's one of the leading in the world now. In We haven't been uh, upgraded into uh, a heritage village you know, by, by UNESCO. Mm -hmm. We haven't won it, you know. Began won it and now won another prize. So they are now one of the top. And it's a tourist destination. And I want Taal to be like that also, but the, the priests are destroying it. So in 1984, they made an alteration chapel, and I sued them. Mm -hmm. And in 2008, I lost. I put it up to the Court of Appeals. Mm. And in 2013, we won the case. So I was able to get now what I can call the legal precedent. Because no matter what you do before, the priest, can, you cannot win because, because there is no legal precedent. The precedent is like, in the case of Taal, because they have always like this with the, with the court. So now I have a legal precedent. That's why they were able to stop the one that they're doing in Balayan, which they plan to put an SM beside the church. Oh, no. you sing, uh, so now it's something that I've done. And it's, uh, it was written, but, you know, it's one of the uh, best laws that was Past, yes. you know, that was helping the heritage of a town or uh, or because right. it is your hometown, yeah, Taal, and yeah. you really want to work towards it becoming a world heritage site. Yes, right. And with the help of my 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 lawyer, mm. who is attorney Sigfried Fortune, who didn't charge me anything, it mm -hmm. was pro bono. I'm yeah. quite happy that he has this kind of feeling about yeah. conserving other uh, churches and houses. Mm -hmm. you know? So now. We have another case because this new priest who knows that, you know, it is wrong to do that, has been doing this again and putting new structures, which is wrong. So I uh, sued him again. And right now, he is out on bail. Mm -hmm. Because what he did was after the court said that, you know, to start doing something on the church. After two days, he continued. So I charged him with uh, contempt of courts. Now, of so, course, a big part of preserving history is preserving the environment. And yes. you've been also a big advocate of that. Tell us about that. You were supporting the Mother Earth Foundation yes, before. Yes, Mother, Mother Earth, the concerned citizens against pollution. We were during the time campaigning against the incinerators. Mm -hmm. All of these are for the help of the environment. Yes. Know? And, well, I'm an environmentalist, and I, I, I try to help, no? Yes. No, um, no matter how I can. Right. Yeah. And, of course, also with um, the legacy, you, you've been so successful in your work, and you want to leave a legacy apart from this museum. Your youngest daughter is, is, is probably the most interested in art. Is that right? Who do you think will take after you with all of this? Yeah, my third daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have four kids, and she's my third daughter. And, and she's the one who's really very good in drawing and staking up. It's last year in multimedia arts. You know? Yes. She didn't like fine arts, but you know, she likes not only painting, but she likes uh, movie, photography, mm -hmm. is good in, in computer, yeah. in Photoshop, you know. So I think he has the line, and you know, when I tried out seeing his freehand drawing, I said, I thought that I was good. I think it's <laughs> <better. laughs> Improvement so, of the yeah, species. Yeah, so I yeah. think it's, it's, it's a good. Uh, Sign. You've done so much in your career. Are there dream projects that you're looking to do? Is there something that you really, or, or collaborations, maybe? Yeah, I, uh, I'm. Uh, there are some works that you know I did not push through because 
of, uh, it's a government project and they don't want to be exposed or they say, okay, let's, let's hold on to this person. I, uh, but, you know, uh, I'm expanding my museum no? mm -hmm. and putting other artworks here, not, uh, putting other arts, you know. Yes. I'll be having a jazz festival here, a poetry, riot, nice. a po poetry reading, no? and with the help of Cripuson and uh, literature, uh, yeah, you literature, literature and uh, what's pushing me also is uh, Sionil Jose. Mm. You know, I have the backup of, you know, and on our affair here, I've invited uh, Raul Suniku, who is my friend, yes. to paint my piano it here. It is That's a beautiful why. place for, yeah, for that, yeah. Yeah. And for I the think arts. I, I will gather all the artists to be here, and I want this area to be to be uh, an, an artist center, yes. you know. And, um, of course, also, you want to bring back to the community. You're thinking of putting up a school, is that right? Because we don't have yet a school for yes, glass. Yes, yes. I, I stopped here. with one Filipino who came back, not really Filipino. He's a Filipino-American who's not been mm -hmm. here. He buried his father, who's Filipino, and he said, oh, can you come here? Because he's a, a blast-blowing instructor mm -hmm. for 25 years. So he taught maybe around 2,000 people already blast-blowing. So I told him, can you come here? twice uh, maybe when you come here and, and teach, teach uh, glass blowing mm -hmm. and I can let that area for the cars no and take out the cars put it here and make that a glass blowing center yeah. yeah we want to put up a school here which is the cold method and the hot method of glass and I think that would be perfect yes definitely the first of its kind no in the country yes yeah. yes because no there's nobody doing glass blowing here yes. I mean in art form like yeah. Chihuly you know now you have contributed so much to the national development of the Philippines and you've gone through so much, many challenges. What is your philosophy? What do you live by to make sure you survive through all the challenges? Oh, I think it's, uh, you need dedication and focus. Me, if I focus on something, I don't, you know, I just concentrate. That's why if I work on something, it's just this, you know. If I work on a car, it's just this. All my focus is there, you know. Mm -hmm. But I can still do other works, but you know, for me, I think it's dedication. Yes. And, yeah. and we definitely see that in your work. Thank you very much, Ramon Orlina, for speaking with us. Great oh, talking to you. It's my pleasure. And that's it for our show tonight. Thanks to our guest, Ramon Orlina, for joining us. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Thanks for watching.